guys, welcome back to the kitchen. I'm excited to have you here today. I'm gonna to do something that, and make something that I make every fall. Um, I need to tell you up front, this is not an approved recipe. It's not approved to can pumpkin butter, and today we're gonna to make pumpkin butter. Um, I've never had a problem with it, and some say because of the thickness and the low acid level, but we're gonna add acid to it, um, and we don't have to have ours so thick. Uh, but I've made this every fall and this year I'm especially excited to make up because my granddaughter is uh, gone to Air Force military basic training and this is her favorite thing every year I've made this for her um, well a lot of people like to have it nice you know over a nice hot biscuit or some homemade bread or something like that I'm pretty sure she eats it with a spoon so you know whatever works for people right so we're going to do, we're going to use these little pie pumpkins that I got. Um, first thing I did was wash them. Turn my oven on to 350 uh, and be sure that your knife is really, really sharp. I sharpened mine, but we'll see how sharp because these are tough. Um, we want to cut these in half. Oh, see my knife doesn't feel so sharp, but I did sharpen it. So we're going to cut these in half. And uh, we're going to bake them. Now, there's some people who will throw this right in the crock pot. This is going to be a crock pot recipe. But I like the flavor that baking something first gives it. So you can also do this with a can of pumpkin uh, that you buy at the store. You don't have to go get these tough little pumpkins. But I like I like this flavor. So I wanted to use the real pumpkins. Um, not the canned pumpkin isn't real pumpkin. And we're going to cut these open and we're going to scrape the seeds out. All right. Looks like we've got this one. I've got my oven heating up. Okay, it's full of seeds. Before you throw these seeds away, I want you to know that pumpkin seeds are delicious toasted. And on a medicinal side, did you know that pumpkin seeds are one of the best anti-parasitics you can get? Yeah, pumpkin seeds, you can feed them to your animals, people feed them to their chickens, their pigs, um, and people eat them as an anti-parasitic. And they taste delicious. You can even flavor them up. In fact, we'll do a video on pumpkin seeds, um, and we'll make a couple different kinds. I like them just with salt and pepper on them. They're really good roasted that way. But uh, when I was a little girl, I remember my uncle roasting pumpkin seeds. And they're good on a salad, everything. So, um, okay, here we have our pretty much cleaned out pumpkin. Oh, you can also save the seeds to grow a pumpkin. There's that too. So we're gonna clean this half out and save the seeds from that. And, you know, separating the seeds from the pumpkin guts sometimes isn't fun, but you can. I do it. I do it every year. I save them and eat them. So, okay, I'm going to do the other one, and I'll be right back. Ah, pumpkin guts. Okay. Um, I went ahead and cut the stem end off. I cannot wait to make this and mail her some. She's going to be so excited. Um... Seeds are out, so I'm just going to lay these face side down, cut side down, on my pizza stone. This is kind of, this is the hardest part of the whole entire making of pumpkin butter, is just getting the stuff out and getting them cut. Okay, this is what they look like, and I'm going to lay these on my pizza stone and let them bake until I can poke a fork in them, uh, and I'm not sure. They're all going to fit on here, maybe so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put one in a separate baking dish. I'll put three on the pizza stone. I just love the way the pizza stone uh, cooks. So I'll get another baking dish for the other one. All right, so here we go into the oven with the pumpkins that I have on the pizza stone. And I'm going to have to move that over because it's too tall for that. And then the one that I put, the other one I put on a glass baking dish, and that'll be fine, and it fits right 
in there perfectly. Okay, we're gonna shut that until we can poke through them with a fork. All right, it's time to check our pumpkins. See how that fork just pokes in really easy into that pumpkin? That means it's time to take them out of the oven and we're gonna let them cool until we can handle them. All right, so now that our pumpkin is cool, we're gonna peel, I started peeling the skin off the pumpkin and it peels off really easy once it's cooked. And we're gonna cut this up into cubes and put into our crock pot. Now, I'm actually gonna do this in two sessions because I have some more that I have to be and I don't have time to let this cook tonight and can it. So I'm actually going to cut this in cubes and uh, put it in the refrigerator. If you don't want to do that, just skip the step of putting it in the refrigerator and move on uh, to the seasonings and everything that you add to it from there, which I will get to next. But I'm just gonna, it's gonna make quite a bit of pumpkin from these two. procedure there but we got it done it wasn't hard the skin peels off pretty easy once it's cooked this is what I'm left with that's quite a bit so I'm excited um, like I said I have to go somewhere so I'm gonna stick this in the fridge if you don't just skip this going to the fridge step and uh, move on to the next step all right so like I said if you have time to go ahead then skip the refrigerator part it's the next day for me um, I've taken my crock pot out of my the crock out of the refrigerator that has my pumpkin in it and you can see that I got quite a bit of pumpkin in here um, so you know you'll want to do your recipe according I've got it on low right now just because it's come out of the refrigerator and I want to heat it up slowly after we get all of our stuff put in there I'll go ahead and turn it up on high for a little bit um, so and you can adjust all of these uh, ingredients to whatever taste, taste you want um, but I'm gonna start out with this and then we'll taste it later but for right now I have a fourth a cup of apple cider vinegar remember I told you that we need to put acid in it so that we can can it even though this is not an approved recipe we have about a fourth a cup of fresh squeezed lemon juice. We're going to put that in there. I have two tablespoons of pumpkin pie spice plus a tablespoon of cinnamon because I like to go heavy on the cinnamon flavor and we're going to sprinkle that in. I have three cups of sugar. Um, this is, even though it's kind of brown in color, it's actually just natural sugar, cane sugar, so it is not brown sugar. Um, if you have brown sugar, you can make, you know, a cup of this or two cups of it brown sugar if you want. But since I don't, I'm actually going to put in a, oh, about a tablespoon of, well, if I can get it open, a tablespoon of molasses. Um, this is a mild molasses, so it's not going to give it a really strong flavor. But I do want a little bit of that brown sugar flavor in here because that just sings a fall to me. So we're going to put a little bit of that in there um, and we're going to put just a little bit of salt, about a teaspoon of salt and last but not least we're going to add about a tablespoon of um, <clears throat> vanilla. Now I make mine homemade and I'm going to have a video coming up on that because we're going to make some for Christmas gifts which I should have already had going by now. But we're going to put about a tablespoon of homemade vanilla in there. There's nothing like homemade vanilla. Once you've done it, you won't want to buy a store-bought anymore. Okay, and we're going to stir this up and we're going to let this sit and get hot and cook down. Now, I don't know how long yet. We're going to, it depends on how much pumpkin you have, um, how much pumpkin you're dealing with. And for me, as you can see, this crock pot is pretty full. I'm going to get the camera up here closer 
All right, it's pretty hot. We're going to take the lid off. Oh, it smells so good in the house. Everything smells like cinnamon. All right, I've been stirring it on occasion. It's pretty thick in here. So I'm going to, because we don't want it too thick to can up, I'm going to add just a little bit of water to this. You can decide what yours looks like. Had I put the pumpkin raw in here and cooked it from the raw stage, it might not have been this thick, but because I baked my pumpkin, but I wanted that baked flavor in it, um, it took it baked some of the moisture out of the pumpkin. So that's why we sometimes have to add a little bit of water back in to make it. But look how good that's cooked down. Um, the next thing we're going to do, I'm going to add just a little bit more water. Then we're going to use an immersion blender on it and get it all blended up. And that will mix that water in too. So let me grab my immersion blender. Alright, let's carefully blend this because it is hot. Got another piece of pumpkin rind in there. Still finding a piece or two here and there. That's still pretty thick, so I'm going to add just a little bit more water to it. We want it thin enough that it's going to be safe to can. Alright. Okay, I have not even tasted this, so now comes the taste test. Let's see. If we need to add anything to it, spice-wise. You know what I think I'm going to add to it? Is another cup of sugar and let it cook for a little bit. It needs just a little bit more sweetness. But it's delicious. And the cinnamon, and all the spices of the pumpkin pie spice. Mm. So I'm going to grab a cup of sugar and add to this. Okay, so I went ahead and added two cups of sugar and another tablespoon of um, vinegar to this. So I'm going to let it cook a little bit so that the vinegar taste is out and so that that sugar gets all dissolved in here. And it's pretty hot. It won't take long. I'll probably let it cook for another 15 minutes. And in the meantime, I will start sterilizing my jars and uh, get them ready to go. So we'll come back and we will can this up. The sugar also makes it a little bit thinner in consistency too, as you can see as it's dissolving in there. So that was helpful. All right, see you back in a minute. All right, so we're back and our pumpkin butter is ready to can up. We're gonna take the lid off. Uh, I went ahead and turned it back on high because I wanted it to be really hot when I started putting it in my jars. I took my jars out of just having them sterilized in the water. I boil them for three to four minutes. And I'm going to fill these jars to and shake them down to a, about an inch head space, half inch to an inch head space. Again, this is not an approved recipe, so this is, you know, if you do it, my kitchen, my rules, your kitchen, your rules. If you're not comfortable canning it, you can freeze it. You can put it in jars. Leave about an inch and a half headspace if you're putting it in jars that you want to freeze so that um, it can expand and not break your jars. So I've got quite a bit here actually. Um, probably way more than I have jars ready. I like to stir it so I keep it really hot while I'm working it. All right, so um, I'm gonna set this up over here. I'm gonna wipe these down so that uh, in case I got anything on the edges. And I'm gonna go ahead. I, I want. I don't want anything to keep these from sealing. And I'm gonna go ahead and cap them off. I've got my pan of water boiling on the stove, my water bath canner. 
So oh, I just got that in there, so that's not good. Let me get a brand new one. You never want to cut corners when canning. It's too much work to have something go wrong. So let's uh, let's can these up one at a time here. I'll go ahead and do them. Okay, those are hot. Just lightly finger tighten. Don't tighten too tight. And this one could actually use a little bit more in it. So let's add just a drop more in here. And I'm going to process these half pints and quarter pints for 10 minutes. And then I do have some pint jars and I will go ahead and do those for 15. Remember not to over tighten your jars. The air has to get out for them to seal. I can hear my water behind me boiling. So at least getting ready to come to a boil. I'm going to get these in the canner, process them for 10 minutes, and get the rest of them jarred up. I'll be back. So I've just taken out the last of the beautiful jars of pumpkin butter. Um, look how gorgeous it is. It's popping. So often we talk about making things and putting it on, having it to put it on our pantry shelf. But I want to say one of my favorite things about making stuff um, is that you can share it with others. I'm excited. Today's pretty much been a day in my kitchen of making stuff for other people. I have a neighbor that I'm going to give some pumpkin butter to, but the big, bigger amount of it I made for my granddaughter who's in the Air Force, and as soon as she gets somewhere where I can mail her some, I'm going to do that. Uh, I took the pumpkin seeds and I toasted those for my other granddaughter who likes the toasted pumpkin seeds. I spent my time in the kitchen waiting while I was waiting on the pumpkin butter to cook to make burritos and freeze for my two grandsons. So um, <clears throat> it's a blessing to get to make things that other people get to try and new things that they can't even buy at the store. So it's always fun to share. Uh, I hope you'll try this, even if you put it in the freezer, if you're not comfortable canning it, try some and just stick it in the freezer. It's awesome and it tastes like fall. So I hope you enjoyed this. Please like, subscribe, and share. Thanks for joining me in the kitchen today.